Hello, I'm Alex Jones, and I'm a radio and television host based in Austin, Texas. And for many years, I've been exposing the criminal activities of the global elite, also known as the New World Order. In past films, we've documented the centralization of power, the move towards world government, the attack on the nation state, self defense, the Second Amendment, family values, that is, the family itself, as well as private property rights. But time and time again in my research, I come, well, eye to eye with something that's even hard for me to believe. And that's that the elite, again, the so-called establishment kings, uh, those that know best, the visions of the anointed ones, are obsessed with the occult, from presidents to governors to the heads of industry. We've all seen the stories of presidents and first ladies obsessed with their astrologers making national policy decisions upon their recommendations. Spiritual guides, shamans in the White House. My friends, it gets far worse than that. Now, I personally am a Christian, but even an atheist should be concerned about the information we're about to bring forward in this new documentary film, The Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove. You see, for over 120 plus years in Northern California, in Sonoma County, on a 2,700 acre secluded redwood grove, leaders from around the world, prime ministers, chancellors, presidents, governors, again, the heads of industry, banking, academia, the media, Hollywood, only a select few, a little over 2,000 people, travel there to engage in bizarre ancient Canaanite, Luciferian, Babylon, mystery religion ceremonies. At least that was the rumors. And so I went to the library and got on the internet and saw many of the mainstream news articles admitting that world leaders do indeed go there and they fly into San Francisco uh, and other surrounding cities and drive out into the rural uh, hills and mountains of Northern California and that these stories have been coming out that they worship some 45-foot stone owl god. And then I began to uh, read some of the documentation on this Moloch character of the Old Testament, mentioned many times in Leviticus. That's in the Bible. Why are world leaders traveling in the middle of nowhere to worship this thing? Well, I had to check it out for myself. And I'm proud of my team, Mike Hansen, Violet Nichols. They traveled with me there. We talked to some of the locals discreetly. We successfully infiltrated with the help of some of the locals and Channel 4, World of Wonder, uh, British television that teamed up with us. And uh, I successfully infiltrated through the Secret Service, uh, through the guards, through the Sonoma County Sheriff's Department. We were inside four hours. That's only one day out of the two weeks that they meet there for the admitted summer fire festival of the Bohemian Club. Well, basically that's enough for me. Uh, it's, it's hard to even describe it with words. And I hope that our hidden cameras uh, can give you at least a small piece of what I witnessed. To have world leaders engaging in this type of sickening behavior... Oh yes, there's much more to come. Mock human sacrifices, they claim, just shocks the very foundations of what Americans believe their leaders to be. And then to have it intimately connected with world government. It doesn't make a lot of sense until you research history. All throughout history, spanning back into the mist of the beginnings of civilization, we see world leaders uh, from the empires of old, from the Aztec kings and priests uh, to Babylonian leaders to ancient Rome engaging in twisted behavior. Could it be that when you have all the power and all the women and all the money and all the lands and all the art, you have to do something new. You have to go against the basic grain of humanity. You have to get off in a sick way. That's what we witnessed in Northern California, July 15th, 2000. Get ready to go inside the Bohemian Grove.
Bohemian Club as it's known today was founded in 1873 in San Francisco in Northern California. Many of the club's original annals, dating back to before the turn of the century, admit that local artists, writers, newspapermen, you name it, wanted a place away from the so-called backwardsness of the West Coast, the Judeo-Christian ethic. They found that place an hour and a half north of San Francisco, outside of the tiny town of Monterio. Their annals even admit an obsession with the occult and what they called druid rituals. Amongst the great redwood trees, they revived ancient ceremonies that in truth had their roots not in the druids, but in Babylon itself. As the railroads brought commerce and larger and larger populations, the prestige of the club grew until, in the year 2000, it is a gathering place for the world establishment, the elite. We're about to show you some of the key evidence documenting this. It is absolutely central to understand that these bizarre activities have been engaged in going back to 1873 and are not some new fanciful whim of the trendies on the West Coast. By the turn of the century, there was already a 10- to 15-year waiting list. Presidents from Howard Taft to Herbert Hoover were on the membership roster. Not to mention, later, famous war general Dwight D. Eisenhower, later to become president. The roster of the Bohemian Club reads like a who's who of the elite. Look at this photo taken inside the Grove back in 1963. There you'll see Ronald Reagan. And sitting two people over from him, later to become president, Richard Milhouse Nixon. Frankly, we don't know if these men actively enjoy the things that go on inside the Bohemian Club. But one thing is perfectly certain from the evidence. They are forced to go and attend and take part in these activities if they wish to be elevated to the highest levels of the geopolitical power structure. Take George Bush Sr., documented member. And then, of course, there's his son, now, the last four generations of Bushes have also attended the Skull and Bone Society at Yale, well known to be steeped in the occult. Then there's Bill Clinton, a frequent attendee. Upon closer inspection, the entire federal government at the highest levels is infested with Bohemian Club members. And it doesn't stop there. America's private run-for-profit Federal Reserve Bank from its very inception in 1913, has been run by prominent members of the Bohemian Club. Central Bank Chairman Alan Greenspan was seen leaving the Bohemian Grove only one month before he was appointed Chairman of the Federal Reserve. He had to be a made man, to be a member of the most powerful cabal on the planet. Historical records are clear for major universities. The Manhattan Project was planned and instituted and run from the Bohemian Club. All of this going on in an atmosphere of bizarre revelry. You're looking at an illustration from a November 1989 issue of Spy Magazine. Spy goes undercover with Henry Kissinger, Merv Griffin, and William F. Buckley, Jr. The story was clearly a shill meant to misdirect the intensifying media coverage that the Grove was getting in the late 1980s. The writer's spin is obvious. They're just masters of the universe, big frat boys blowing off steam. We'll get back to this article later. Because you can clearly see that the mantra in the spin story has been picked up as a front by all the local media. Sure, they're elitist. Sure, they have some bizarre rituals. But what's the big deal? They're just having fun. If that was the case, why would David Gergen, presidential advisor, to President Clinton resigned from the Bohemian Club and 17 other organizations